The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. Your market's in positive territory. Quite the acceleration yesterday, and we're just above those price levels. As we we're above intraday highs yesterday, we're positive by 17 points on the session right now, and we are just under 5,500 in the S&Ps. You're positive by three tenths percent. NASDAQ 100. Also above the highs of yesterday as well right now. Positive by about 65 points, three-tenths percent in the red, in the green. Excuse me. Dow up 50 points right now, up a tenth of a percent. And you got the Russell up a tenth of a percent as well. Crude, how about it? $68.33. Crude, we'll talk a little bit of OPEC this morning. You jump over to gold. Gold up $9, trading at $25.41. We take a look at notes and bonds. The 10-year right now, technically flat. And we are pushing the highs that we saw intraday yesterday. That would correlate to a yield that would be the low of intraday yesterday. And that's talking about a yield right now on the dot at 3.7%. 3.7 right on the dot. So you get the 10-year sitting right at 3.7%. And we get the two-year at about 3.66%. 3.66. That's how it should be. It had been inverted, inverted for a long period of time. Excuse me, we have the two-year above the 10-year. But guess what? We got cuts coming down the line in eight days. The mark market knows it, and they think that they're coming pretty rapidly. We're going to get 25. We're going to get 50. We will find out next Wednesday. But we got some. Uh, we got a week of action before then. The dollar right now up about 10 pennies, trading at 101.65. We jump over the volatility index, pairing some of the gains, but still some volatility priced in here. We're sitting at 19.15. And remember, we get CPI data out tomorrow. We get PPI data out on Thursday. You get some jobless claims out on Thursday as well. You get Michigan sentiment numbers out on Friday. And tonight we get the debate. Not sure you'll get anything dramatic, but boy, as we saw on the last day, there's always an opportunity for a fork in the road and change things that come in terms of the last debate with Biden and Trump. I do say it is interesting, right? All Trump had to do is not debate Biden. It's like uh, he had it in the bag. And um, anyway, found myself thinking that one. But this will be an interesting one because Kamala, what is she going to do, right? It seems like Trump, everybody knows who Trump is. Not a lot of people know who Kamala, the presidential candidate, is. So it's going to be interesting to see how that squares off. That'll be tonight. Um, and we'll see where we go. Pretty remarkable that we are just two months out from an election. Two months out from an election. Nonetheless, you get the debate going on tonight. And yeah. We'll see if they talk any actual material facts that can move the market. Nonetheless, we will find out. All right, what else we got going on? This one's an interesting one. I was reading this from Bloomberg. I'm going to kick it off with this one. Because, boy, if you're looking for a vehicle, you're looking for a lease, sometimes lease have, leases have decent deals depending on what car you're getting. But, boy, the EV market right now for leases, how about $20 a month? Now, I don't think you're going to go find $20 a month. They anecdotally talk about that in here, but I don't see the deals for $20 a month. Um, but $200 to $300 a month, yeah, you're going to find some deals. You know why? The reason why is because the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 severely restricted tax breaks for purchasing battery-powered vehicles. OK, so many of the roughly 75,000 EVs that Americans are leasing wouldn't qualify for the tax credits if they were bought. But guess what? There was a loophole added that any EV marked for a lease is where you got to love governments and tax policies and and everything that comes with tax credits that goes in. However, they snuck this one into it. The law considers leased EVs as commercial vehicles, allowing them to qualify for the full credit even if they don't meet the battery and parts sourcing requirements. What is up with that, right? That's allowed car companies and dealers to bundle the $7,500 tax credit savings into the lease financing costs, lowering that payment. Now, what was interesting is check out, this is 
the share of these brands below their U.S. EV transactions that release it. So for BMW, nine out of every 10 EVs that they sell is leased. Yeah, look at it. Audi, 87%. Lexus, 79%. Now, I will say to you, I had leased BMW a short while. BMW, they do a pretty good job of pushing out leases anyway as a way to maintain one of their top spots as a luxury vehicle maker in the U.S. <coughs> Sometimes you'd actually be surprised. I know that, you know, you're taking the new vehicle off the lot, right? You're losing some of that cash. But I'm telling you, when you go into one of their mainstay vehicles, now listen, you want to go out there and lease some super expensive version of theirs. But when you're leasing one of the more affordable models of some of these brands, those are the models that they're just pushing them out in numbers, right? whether it's a 3 Series BMW, now it's a 4 Series um, Mercedes to the same degree as certain on some of their levels. But nonetheless, I didn't know any of this was going on. 9 out of 10 BMWs, EVs, no wonder you're seeing so many EVs on the road. That's why you're seeing them on the road when you're talking about leases, especially when you look at some of the luxury makers, right? BMW, Audi, Lexus, and Mercedes, yeah, 90, 87, 79, and 70 percent. They're all leases. Yeah, BMW, 89 percent. Man. Leasing appeals to customers who like the idea of EVs but aren't ready to make a long-term commitment to evolving technology. I don't know. If you're ready to go for an EV for the next three years, then it's probably going to be okay after that, right? It's like, do we want to go for it right now? If there's an, if you're you're making a long-term commitment for three years, I think they're going to be around in three years. But nonetheless, yeah. They talk about some of the Kias in there. A lease in April that costs just three oh seven a month. That's less than half what he would pay to buy the car with a six-year loan and no down payment. Now, you own the car on the other flip side of that, okay? But you do do some – some of those numbers you work out here, right? Let's just say – because I've done these conversions on leasing vehicles, right? You buy a car for $50,000 and you pay that car down so you own that car over a period of five years – and then that car is worth twenty grand after it or something like that. So you paid thirty grand, you you secure some of it. But the other side of those conversations are you can lease cars for three years. When I was doing this originally, this is the conversation I was having in my head. You lease a vehicle, let's say that vehicle has a sticker price of fifty thousand dollars, just for simple math. Okay. And let's say you're paying five hundred dollars a month. Again, for simple math. Well, you're paying six thousand dollars a year if you're paying five hundred a month which would mean you're paying about $18,000 over three years. Now, one aspect of leasing a brand new vehicle is you have no repair costs whatsoever in a lot of these, right? You lease a brand new vehicle, a lot of them have service and repairs included. Now you have insurance, you have everything else goes with it, okay, but you're not gonna have uh, new tires in there. Well, tires sometimes you gotta pay for, but nonetheless, right, some of those repair costs, we'll finish it up, but point being, you spend about $18,000 on it. It's very similar to actually buying the car. You buy a car for 50 grand, okay? And in 3 years you've paid it down $18,000. There's a legit chance you can you can sell that car for about $30,000. You're still taking the off the lot hit. But the point being is it's not that much of a loss leader compared to purchasing a car sometimes. Because it's still a deal where you have residual value at the end and whether you're paying for that residual value upfront or not. But nonetheless, man, EVs, pretty remarkable. You're in the market for a cheap EV, go lease it right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back. We'll talk some Google. We'll talk some equities. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets right now. S&P's up by about 17. Just finishing that conversation real quick because having a conversation with our man Mike and the Tiger Stand talking about, you know, down payments. What is intriguing, right? Many times, just because I've done it. If you see the advertised prices on leases, on all the TV ads that you see, most of those do come with a down payment. So you don't realize it, right? They'll say lease a Lexus for four thirty nine dollars a month. Well, that lease deal, if you read the fine print on that ad at the bottom of that ad on your television, is going to say that's putting forty nine ninety nine dollars down, uh, taxes and insurance not included, et cetera. But you don't have to put that money down. You can put that right into the lease. It's the same thing as any other financial transaction. They'll just jack your payments up a bit. But where it really gets interesting is, is that part with the no repairs part of things because, you know, I have my car now, it's five and a half years old. And it pops up, right? You need brakes. You need um, whatever you need, right? You need an oil change. You need that oil. I mean, oil changes are included in, in those lease payments, at least for BMW, they are. So you don't realize how quickly. And then you have the surprise. I mean, what if you got rotors have a problem or something like that, right? You're talking thousands of dollars potentially, depending on where you are. Um, just some of those repairs that come in, et cetera. Um, I had a, I had a flat tire, but then I had tire insurance, and then I had turned it out that it was actually a rim that was having the problem. The rim had a crack that was causing problems in my tire. Well, thankfully, I had tire insurance, which actually covered the rim as well, but if you didn't have that, all that plays into it. Man, cars are expensive when you talk about repairs, especially when you get into those years three, four, five. So what's intriguing, right, just to finish up that conversation is because I was having, I didn't want to be wasting money leasing these vehicles, but I love the fact that I could plan for the payment and get no surprise two to three thousand dollar bills that come very often as we all know if you're an owner of a used vehicle that's approaching years three four five six and even down from there right you're going to get those things that pop up um 
etc. And what really seems to happen is, as I mentioned, it is the cars. Now we're jumping around, all right? This is the EV deal, and they talk about, and this is what's intriguing though, is that they make the case here, right? Kia has some electric vehicles, and they don't even keep the e EV9 on their lot because it's as much as eighty thousand dollars, and that takes a lot of people. Um, of Kia people out of the market. You're not usually showing up at a Kia lot to purchase a vehicle approaching $100,000, right? So they don't keep them on the lot. But what do they do? Yeah, they, they push those out in lease. Now, what is intriguing here is that the anecdotal one they choose at the end is a gentleman, 83-year-old Air Force veteran from High Point, North Carolina, considering buying a new Kia Nero earlier this year. He found a lease in April that costs three oh seven a month. That's less than half what he would have to pay to buy the car. But this is where it gets close, all right? This article, and that's where Bloomberg, you know, clickbait, clickbait's everywhere. Even with the organizations that I respect tremendously, like Bloomberg, it's kind of like a little bit of a clickbait. They could have gotten a little bit better into the comparisons, especially because they talk about up here, EV leases go as low as $20 a month. And all they do is anecdotally kind of just touch on the fact that somebody bought one with a $20 a month payment somewhere in here, okay? And then at the end of the article, they talk about this gentleman who's paying three oh seven a month for a Kia Nero, and when I Google a Kia Nero, the MSRP is about $26,000 a year. Well, geez, that's a pretty hefty lease payment, $300, when you're buying a brand new vehicle that's under $27,000 a year on the flip side of that, right? I just want to finish up that conversation because you're buying a $27,000 car with 104 horsepower, and you're still paying a lease payment of $300 a month. Now, do the math here, and this is the last one I wanted to do, okay? Because it's still going to work out. He's not getting hosed on that deal. It's just like a different way of financially engineering, whether you own it, whether you lease it, you're taking that hit up front, but you don't have to finance the further years if you don't plan on being them. So he's paying $3,600 a year for that car. He's going to pay about $10,000 for that vehicle over a three-year period in lease payments. The cool part is he's got nothing else to cover. He's done. If he can pay through $3,600 a year, he's got a brand new vehicle. OK, now in three years, if he had been financing that car, right, check out what it went. He would have paid six hundred dollars a month. He just said, right, the end of that vehicle, because this is a cool conversion they do. All right. If he had done a six year loan with no down payment, which is what his lease was, he would have been paying double. And after three years, he still would have had three years left of payments. Right. But after three years, check this out. He would have paid in payments about $7,200 a year, which worked out to $21,000 he would have had left to pay, right? Meanwhile, if he leases the vehicle, he's paid $10,000 up front, and what's happened? Well, at the end of that, he has nothing to show for it. But the other flip side of that is, is if he had just bought the vehicle outright for $27,000, Okay, there's a pretty good chance that in three years that vehicle is going to be worth 15, 17 grand, which is exactly the same exact place that hit end up. And I'm totally ballparking. Maybe it's worth a little less, but you get the point, right? If he buys the thing brand new and over the next three years, it's at least going to take about a $10,000 hit, maybe sells the car outright for 14, 15 grand after those three years or something like that. It's pretty close sometimes, some of these leases. Uh, and on a cash flow basis, you do got to love that there's no surprises, there's no down payment if you don't want it, and there's no oil changes, there's no repairs, everything. All right. Didn't think we'd spend that much on lease payments, but boy, it is interesting when you look at uh, Yeah. And, you know, you can see why it, I'm going to check it out myself, man, after doing this. You know, I'm going to see what, what numbers they have out there because, yes, I'm not in the market for an EV. But guess what? I'm in the market for an EV. If you're going to let me lease a car for three years and you're going to give me the $7,500 credit that this car can't even qualify for if it's sold. Where are those questions, right? How did that one sneak in there? Why are these all commercial vehicles if they're leased? Nonetheless, that's how it goes. Uh, somebody was paying the, the right politician and uh, to make sure that loophole got in there. All right, we jump around. Apple and Google, they both lose. Multi-billion dollar court fights with the EU. Yeah, $14.4 billion tax bill for Apple and Google's penalty for abusing its dominance is also upheld. 
anytime you think there's going to be a problem, folks, if you're worried about you know what these companies are paying for taxes, if you're worried about all that, Apple shares, you're going to be down a dollar to two dollars. They'll be okay. You're trading where you were basically at about 3.20 p.m. Eastern time as of yesterday. And you got Google shares actually trading higher this morning as they get put that one behind them. They're trading at 151. We closed yesterday at 149.54. We jump around to some of the other magnificent seven. Look at the lift Amazon getting in the pre-market up to 178. You were at 170 after the market Friday. Amazing, some of the turnarounds. Now we get back to Apple. Look at the seesaw yesterday, right? And this is what we're going to talk about when we come back after this break. We're going to come back for the opening bell, folks. We'll come back. We'll take a look at Apple. We'll talk a little bit about their event yesterday with the 16 plus. And it is intriguing as we jump over to that headline. Where are we? All right, I'll pull up. Here we go. Yeah, this one from the journal. Talking about the 16 plus, the first look. Some of those journalists got to use some of those new features in terms of Apple with their new iOS 18. Those uh, iOS 18 not going to be available until at least next month. We'll take a look though. Talking about the 16, some of the bells and whistles. We'll talk some Apple. We'll talk some tech stocks. We'll be right back, folks. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&P right now up by 18 points. NASDAQ 100 positive by 65. All the markets in the green. Russell barely. We got crude right now trading at 68.75. 
jump over to the gold contract. Gold right now up by ten dollars, trading at twenty five forty two, and we got notes and bonds basically flat right now. Coming into Fed Day a week from tomorrow. And yeah, we got man. You talk about the YouTube tigers, then man. We got some. That then that is that's that's the best way to do it, man. You got you got some tigers and tigresses over here with with cars with eight hundred and fifty thousand miles, three hundred and ten thousand miles. Um, yeah, and hey, that's the best way to save money, man. Because then it doesn't matter what your repair costs are when you don't have a car payment where you got a car going where it's eight hundred and fifty thousand miles. Yeah, because where it really does add up is when you still got the payment, right? Then you deal with unexpected repairs, etc. You get rid of the payment, man. That's how you get it done for sure. Period. All right. What else have we got going on? We're talking about the iPhone. So, what was interesting in this? article so i was reading it this morning it was out last night and it was talking about the first look and what it talks about here is that while we wait for apple intelligence check out these buttons and what is intriguing here is that i don't think that's enough i think this isn't gonna motivate people as as the super cycle is about ai on this revolution right and so where is that apple intelligence and what she talks about in here is that they allowed you to use that for the first time. Who's the author here? Joanna Stern. And they allowed you to use it, but it was only in beta. And the reason why is because it was struggling, even as they began to use it. Now, Apple Intelligence, okay, is going to be available. Let's see. They let them use it. It's iOS 18.1, all right? And that is coming next month with the first wave of new generative AI features, okay? Now, what she does is she used the Notes app. And it's going to be simple stuff. Listen how it's going to correct things real quickly. It's just going to be – so she – you write a note and you use the writing tool, it says, to help the note become more professional. And it changes the note from, I'll be home tomorrow. Do you think you want an iPhone? And it changes that to, I anticipate returning home tomorrow. Would you be interested in receiving an iPhone 16? Now, she's texting her mom. That's not the – the appropriate tone that you normally use with her mom, right? So how's that going to play out? But you can see how this is going to get cleaned up, as in you're going to have different tones that you can use, whether maybe you are you wanted to write something and rephrase it if you're emailing a manager versus if you're emailing your close family or your wife or your husband, etc. The feature with the most everyday potential is one of the iPhone apps coming cleanup tools for the photo app. And it was one of those whose demo was the most problematic. I found this one, right? One of the coolest facts out there, one of the coolest parts that are coming down the line is they're going to have something similar to Google's Magic Eraser. If you take a picture and a certain person ends up in that picture and you want them out of that picture, you can just scribble over that person and it blends the background, etc. Um, and then what happened, though? is that you have stains it's not quite working perfectly um yeah nonetheless you know and you got camera you got some buttons now what was so intriguing is that at the end of this now they talk about battery life all right it's got the new 18 chip the pro models they say can play videos four hours longer than the 15 pros i'm dealing with the 12 so it's got to be amazing one thing is I just plug my phone in occasionally throughout the day. Yes, the battery's having problems, but it's not having problems enough to make me buy a new phone on that alone. Yes, that would be one of the things I benefit from, okay? But what she says is, and this is talking directly to me, and I'm trying to tell you that this isn't exactly getting it done. I was all geared up. I've been telling my dad about, I think it's time to get, you know, I got a 12 right now. I'm going on four years. I've had this phone. The super cycle upgrade, I'll get one of the models on the higher end that has the A18 that can do all this stuff for Apple intelligence when it comes out. These iPhone 16 models are a mix of the usual polish and a lot of potential. I don't want potential, man. I can wait for potential. I was going to do it because it's coming right now. If you've been holding out to upgrade your two or three year old iPhone, I'm at four. This looks to be a solid move. The battery life alone will likely make a difference in your life. I'm not upgrading on battery life alone. Yes, it might make sense, okay, if you're really. Um, as for the AI features that are going to change everything, well, I can't really tell you how good it is until all of Apple's AI magic is buttoned up. Not exactly glowing, right? Um, so be careful on Apple there because if this becomes a theme, right, I found myself totally amped up. 
And now I'm saying, geez, if this is it, maybe I'll at least wait until Apple Intelligence is rocking and rolling. I will avoid the demand on the get-go on the release, right? And I'll wait. I'll let it come out. I'll let everybody else be the beta testers out there. And then I'll come in. I'll buy a new phone when I don't have to wait for it. There'll be no delay. Maybe not necessarily get a sale. I'm not sure. But look at Apple down 1.3% right now. Uh, there is a lot of upside built into this equity that just traded from 165 to 217. Remember, Apple is a company with how many outstanding shares now? 15.2 billion, okay? 15 billion shares. You just traded up a trillion dollars to the high on a lot of the expectations that the new phones, you're going to have to remember, they just announced. This is like one of the first times ever that they literally said, we're going to have features in the new iOS, and unless you have the up-to-date phone of the most capable chips, you can't use them. The market said, oh my goodness, this is going to be wild, man. Everybody's going to have to upgrade like never before because they actually have noticeable differences in the performance of this handheld phone that we're going to be selling. And no, those differences aren't there yet. They're not there yet. They're not working as well as they might. And now you have a Wall Street Journal re reporter saying, you know, maybe it makes sense just to do it for the battery alone. And then the potential is there. That's not why I was going to do it, man. My phone is four years old and it's working pretty well. I can't imagine if it was two or three years old, right? I got the 12 Pro Max. It's awesome, all things considered. I just know that it's slowing down a little. The battery's a little low, and it might be time. But uh, hearing that review doesn't make me want to get in line and spend $1,200 if I can wait even a few months without the reason and then come in when I want to see Apple Intelligence really rocking, man. That's the reason why I was doing it. So they have to make that happen. The bar is going to be set there. We jump over to Google shares, up by 1.5% as Apple dips lower. You got Amazon up by 1.7. Microsoft shares up by 1.7 as well. We jump over to Tesla, up by 2.7% right now for Tesla shares. And let's see what else we got going on. Uh, we'll stay with the car theme. So interesting, right? We were talking about it. I guess BMW, they got to start leasing more EVs. No, BMW cuts financial targets on recall costs and muted demand in China. Yeah, China's got some issues, as we all know right now. Cost to address a problem with the braking system in more than 1.5 million vehicles estimated at the high three-digit million euros. That's approaching a billion dollars is another way to say that, right? I had to sit there, and I love math, but I had to say to myself, are they talking about a billion dollars? Yeah, they're talking about a billion dollars, the high three digits, not the low three digits, which would be a hundred. The high three digits to fix their braking problems that they got going on. You got BMW down between 7 and 8% right now as they slash the full forecast, full year forecast. They got some problems. Yeah. Despite stimulus measures from the government, consumer sentiment remains weak. Talking about that Chinese market. Stay tuned, folks. We got, uh, we'll talk some oil. We'll take a look at some other equities. We'll Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. 
And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps holding on to the gains of the open. We're up by about 17 points right now, trading at 54.97. NASDAQ up by 48 points. NASDAQ 100, we dip a little bit lower after trading above 18,800. We're positive by 56 points, and you get the Dow and the Russell rolling over to slightly red. Bitcoin. Quite the acceleration off the lows of Friday from 52,000 and change to 58,000 on Sunday night. We're trading at 57,060. Crude. Look at that little drop off. Right, crude from 68.80 to 68.27. We had a 67 handle early this morning. I said I filled up my gas tank. I think Sunday, 293, 293. Now that's at Sam's, which is going to be about seven to ten pennies, maybe even a little bit more sometimes, depending. Uh, cheaper than the normal gas stations, but it's 293. All right, pretty remarkable. All right, so we talk a little bit of OPEC. We saw crude. OPEC trims oil demand outlook further amid price slump. The report comes after oil prices tanked last week, erasing all gains made this year. One of the more interesting stories of what's going on right now is the price of oil. And it is interesting. On the morning of the first presidential debate between Trump and Harris, oil's playing into this, right? It is intriguing. I've been reading the articles. Bloomberg had one the last couple of days talking about, you know, inflation is front and center. But the fact that you got something that is so pervasive in everyone's life in terms of the money, the cost, you're filling it up. It's a reminder every three to four days, if you're driving a lot, you're filling up that gas tank, you're reminded constantly. Your brain can't help but see the fact you're paying such cheap crude prices. That's impacting how much money you have at the end of the week, the end of the month, et cetera. And it's making the, the claim of inflation more difficult. Um, and as we know, that comes into politics as well. So it's everywhere. But so you have... OPEC slightly cut its forecast for oil demand growth after delaying its planned output hikes last week in a bid to support sinking prices. They expect demand to grow by 2 million barrels a day this year and 1.74 million barrels a day in 2025 from 2.11 and 1.78 million barrels a day previously. So they bring those numbers down slightly, right? This year, they bring it down by 0 0.08 million or 80,000 barrels a day and then on next year they bring it down slightly as well demand is still seen at healthy levels well above the historical average of 1.4 million barrels a day as seen before the pandemic it is interesting when you start comparing things like pre-pandemic you're going back five years ago right time is amazing man can you believe that we're going back five years ago 
Yeah, five years ago. I had to check my math again. That you know, we're coming in March of 2025 is going to be five years since COVID hit. I remember sitting in my living room, man. I remember it happening, as we all do, I'm sure. Tuesday's report came after oil prices tanked last week. Yeah, it raced all the gains of the year. And you have OPEC and its allies decide to postpone their plans to start unwinding voluntary cuts. Pretty difficult to unwind cuts right now with where the price of crude is. Yeah. Current prices are far from what leaders in Saudi Arabia and Russia need to balance their budgets. Whew. Yeah. Meanwhile, you get all the big banks cutting their oil expectations for the prices, citing concerns over sluggish demand growth in China. China's everywhere, man. And they got some real problems in China. We were talking about yesterday, deflationary, five quarters in a row in China. They got deflationary prices going on. Think about that one, right? Five quarters in a row, deflationary prices going on. All right. So we get the debate this evening, beginning things. We have a little bit of a dip in the markets right now as you get the NASDAQ 100. We just spiked 100 points from where we were at the highs, down to 18,725 right now. You jump over to Southwest. So... Yeah, this one. Their chairman's stepping down, I believe, right? Is that what's going on? So they got activist investors going on, I believe. Where are we? Did we have this one up? I thought we did. No, nope, that's live. All right, it was right on the front page of one of these. There we go. Yeah, executive chairman to retire amid activist pressure. So the board plans to appoint four new independent directors and con will consider director candidates proposed by Elliott Investment Management. But executive chairman Gary Kelly, he's out said, ah, I'm not going to stick around for this. In a big board shakeup, as the airline faces pressure from that activist investor, worked at Southwest for nearly 40 years. Yeah. He was a chief executive for 18 years, been on his board chairman since 2008. So no small feat, right, when you look at that. He left the CEO role in 2022 to become executive chairman. Man. Yeah, but Elliot's in there, and they want some change. They're launching a proxy fight. Six other Southwest directors intend to retire in November as the airline looks to refresh its board. So they're refreshing everything. But you know what? You take a look at this chart, all right? And yeah, it's probably time to refresh everything when you're trading back to prices you were trading at in 2014. Now, a lot of airlines are doing that. But even worse, look where you are. You're only five bucks above where you were at 24 years ago. Just craziness in terms of those airlines. Now, you take a look at a lot of these equities. Let's see where JetBlue is. And they're not going to go back as far, of course. But, yeah, look at this one, man. Jeez, you didn't break even since where you were. JetBlue, you were 31 bucks down to 5 My goodness. Delta, you're back to prices you were trading at in 2014, just like Southwest. You ever trade in airlines, folks? Do not hold forever. Do not hold forever on airlines. United. Look at this. United's back to where you were in 2006. Absolutely were wild. Okay. Let's jump around and see how some of the banks are trading right now. Bank of America, flat right now. You're trading at 39.47. JP Morgan, they trade lower. They were up to 222. Look at that run. You're back to 217 right now for JP Morgan. You jump over to Wells Fargo. They're up by 2.4%. And City right now, down 1%. As we got markets in positive territory, Dow rolls over a bit. Let's take a look at what's what the negativity's got going on here. All right, we got American Express in the red. You got Goldman off three percent in the Dow. That's going to take a hit. Price weighted index. You got a you got an index. You got an equity that's trading at near five hundred dollars. This is why the Dow makes no sense whatsoever. You have an equity, Goldman Sachs, that's trading at four hundred and seventy three dollars. Okay. And. What's what's one of the cheapest? Anybody know offhand? Look at Coke, seventy-two dollars. Yeah, Intel. I knew it. Intel's trading at eighteen dollars. It's bonkers, man. It makes no sense whatsoever. Price weighted, and that's why Intel's probably going to get booted from the Dow. Intel is trading at eighteen dollars, and then you got a company like Goldman Sachs that's down eighteen dollars today, right? Intel could go to zero today, and it would have the same impact of Goldman Sachs going down three point five percent. That's a good comparison to describe to you why it makes no sense. Goldman Sachs, $148 billion company. Intel, about half of that. $80 billion company. And meanwhile, Intel could go to zero, and it would have the same impact of Goldman Sachs going down 3%. Yeah.
nonetheless, I do like those market watch, the maps. They give you a quick idea. Apple's off 1.7%, all right? But that's that's why it works, man. In terms of Goldman Sachs, you're down 18 dollars on that equity you got verizon slightly in the red chevron slightly in the red merck's down a percent home depot basically flat cisco and there's intel and apple we jump over the s p 500 what do we got yeah oracle they're out with their numbers right big numbers for oracle and the cloud check it out man ellison what's ellison going to be worth after today we're going to see the articles man how much does he own? He owns a lot, that's for sure. Oracle up by 13.5%. We'll take a look at some of those chip companies. When we come back, don't go away, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's hanging out up 16 points right now, trading at 54.96. And yeah, as I mentioned, Oracle, they got some numbers, man. And you got upgrades going on, new recommendations, and everybody updating their price targets as Oracle out with their numbers. And it is interesting. I was listening to Bloomberg earlier this morning. They were talking about the numbers last night from Oracle, and then I was hearing Oracle advertisements on Bloomberg. And I was like, man, imagine, you know, you know you're going to blow it out of the park. They're probably on there anyway. Um, but nonetheless, you're up by 13.5%. You jump over to the Analyze tab. And this is a company that's already, yeah, you're at $437 billion. They got about almost 3 billion shares. 
I mean, you're talking about adding almost what, $50, $60 billion in market cap to this equity overnight? You take a look at the long-term chart of this thing, look at that chart. Maybe Larry Ellison's going to go buy himself another sailboat or another island in Hawaii or have his kids buy another studio. <laughs> I kid. Why not, man? Uh, credit to him because, boy, it is quite a number in terms of where that equity has gone. And it's not stopping. I mean, there's no pullback. Look at this three-year weekly, right? Yeah, you had a little bit. You gotta love those channel lines, man. You break out of that channel line, boom. From April at 112 to 158 right now. You break out, you come back, you test it. It's perfect. Didn't even know that was on there. But man, this is a run from 60 bucks in 2022 to 160 bucks. You jump over to NVIDIA shares. NVIDIA this morning up by about 1.3% right now. We jump over to AMD, up by three tenths percent. Intel. The $19 stock in the Dow somehow when you got a company like Goldman Sachs that's in the Dow that's down $19 today. Goldman off by 3.8%. And so for tomorrow, we got live programming all day today, okay? Basil Chapman's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour, folks. Tomorrow, we're not going to have live shows because we're moving our entire studio to a new location in St. Pete. It's just down the road. It should take out one day tomorrow. We're going to move the whole studio. We'll have everything streamlined as well. Always kind of nice when you do a nice little refresh start. We'll be back live Thursday with full programs. But tomorrow, no programs tomorrow. So I'll see you back here 9 a.m. on Thursday. I'm going to be moving all day tomorrow with Jacob, Tom, Bessford, everybody out there at TFNN. But we got live today. Basil Chapman's up next, and I'll see you Thursday morning. Have a great one, folks.